Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black Improvise artifact deck featuring a lot of the new cards from Aether Vault. So the idea behind the deck is to play lots of cheap artifacts, some of which make multiple artifacts to enable a lot of our artifact synergies that can let us play out a Gear Seeker Serpent turn 3 or 4. We can also play cards like Herald of Anguish pretty early, which is very punishing for the opponent. And we also have cards like Reverse Engineer that help us refuel once we've deployed our entire hand. So these are just some of the artifact payoff synergies, but we've got lots more. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with Bonesaw, a card that's not great by itself, but for zero mana this helps us enable a lot of synergies and can help us empty our hand quickly so that we can then maybe play an early Gear Seeker Serpent or refuel our hand with Reverse Engineer. And of course, since we are also a deck with lots of flyers, being able to equip this onto a Thopter token or an unblockable creature is still quite nice. Then we have Merchant's Dockhand, which is an interesting card from Aether Vault. In the early game, this just helps us enable all the artifact synergies, can maybe tap for Improvise, and in the late game, this just turns into a card advantage engine, letting us look at multiple cards and then taking the best one. We also have a Renegade map, which kind of works as a land in this deck, but also helps us enable artifact synergies, so just a great card in this kind of deck. We also have a Battle at the Bridge, which is a nice removal spell that works well with artifacts and has Improvise, so this can help us maybe win a racing situation. Two copies of Glint Nest Crane, just to provide us a nice value creature, a 1-3 flyer, that will most of the time find us an artifact and maybe even multiple artifacts, so we can choose the one we need. We also have Scrap Heap Scrounger, another cheap artifact creature to enable our synergies. And we also have lots of ways to make our creatures unblockable. So this has a lot of power for just two mana. Of course, we're also playing Smuggler Sculptor since we have a lot of ways to make servo tokens that can easily crew the Smuggler Sculptor. And of course, it's an artifact to go with our artifact theme. Then we have Servo Schematic, which is one of the better enablers in this deck, since for 2 mana we get both the Servo Schematic itself and a Servo token, so that's 2 artifacts for 2 mana, which can quickly enable a lot of our synergies. We're not really planning to sacrifice the Servo Schematic in this deck to get the second Servo token, but we do have ways to return the Servo Schematic to our hand with cards like Esper Zoa, so that we can then replay the Servo Schematic and get a second servo token going. So Asperzo is also great in this deck because it's an artifact creature so we can find it with cards like Linnas Crane and enables our artifact synergies. It's a four powered flyer which is a lot and also works great with cards like Bonesaw since we can simply return the Bonesaw and replay it without any downsides and uh, yeah just works very well in this deck. We don't want too many copies, however, since if we don't have a card like Bonesaw, it gets a little awkward on our mana, since it is pretty expensive to keep replaying cards like Servo Schematic, even though we do get a Servo token every time. We also have Weaponcraft Enthusiast, which for 3 mana makes two Servo tokens, so that's two artifacts for our improvise purposes, and also gives us a Chum Blocker, that's pretty useful. We also have Whirler Rogue, still one of the better artifact cards, and works very, very well in this deck, since the second ability of being able to make one of our creatures unblockable by tapping two artifacts comes up a lot more than it used to, so this can be activated multiple times in the same turn to make our entire army unblockable, and that can quickly close out the game once we have a Gear Seeker Serpent in play. We also have Thopter Spy Network, another great payoff card for all our artifact synergies, making a Thopter every turn and letting us draw an additional card every turn if we can connect. Of course we're also playing with Tazeret the Schemer, which is a removal spell, a way to make more artifacts and eventually also a win condition. Reverse Engineer to refuel. Gearseeker Serpent, which we will we'll often play for just double blue, 
and can also be made unblockable by paying 6 mana, but most of the time we will be using a Whirler Rogue. And then finally Herald of Anguish, which is probably the best card if we can play it early, but unfortunately only one copy because it's a mythic, but makes the opponent discard a card every turn, and that's even at the end step of our turn, so even if they have a removal spell but they're tapped out, they will be discarding a card regardless. And then we can also use it as a removal spell. And I guess this is a way we can sacrifice those servo schematics as well. Our mana base heavily skewed towards blue because we need double blue for cards like uh, Reverse Engineer and Gear Seeker Serpent, as well as Whirler Rogue and our Thopter Spy Network. But we also need some black for cards like Herald of Anguish and uh, two Sunken Hollows and two Drowned Catacomb. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which is interesting. We have double Copter and we can maybe crew it turn 4 with the Rogue. So this hand could turn out poorly, but I think the power level is high enough that I should keep. If we find any way of crewing the Copter turn 3, that would be nice. Also missing black mana for Battle at the Bridge, but with Copter and the Looting effect shouldn't be too hard to find black mana. And uh, Gear Seeker, probably turn 5. up against Black White, Ether Poisoner, so 1-1 one, one Death Touch gets 2 energy and then they can spend 2 energy to make a Servo token. Alright, there's our Swamp, so I don't really see a reason to use Battle at the Bridge here, and I actually think I want to play out the Island, since we might need more blue mana. So yeah, let's just play another Copter. And then next turn we can play the Rogue. Opponent getting in there with the Poisoner. Likely making a Servo Token. So down to 19 we go. And the follow-up is a hidden stockpile, alright, so that's another new card from Aether Vault. So they can sacrifice a creature, scry one, and they get a servo token if they lost a permanent during their turn. So what they cannot do is chum block with the servo and get a new one since it only happens during their turn. So uh, that's pretty relevant. Alright, so let's just play out a Whirler Rogue and attack for 6. I guess I'll crew with the Thopter tokens here, keep the Rogue on defense since it can block a Servo token. Opponent could have a Fatal Push here perhaps, but they did let us attack so seems unlikely. Let's loot. A Herald of Anguish is nice. So we do need double black, so we kind of have to keep the swamp. Which means we either have to ditch the serpent or the battle at the bridge. I guess we can ditch the battle at the bridge since with World of Rogue we don't really need removal spells since we can just go unblockable. And I'll ditch a swamp here. So hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us discarding that removal spell. But with this much evasion, it doesn't seem necessary to have removal. And even if our opponent has a sweeper effect here, we still have the two copters, which means we could still play out one of our two seven drops. Both getting in there. I don't think there's a, an effect we really need to play around here. Opponent might just want to get the hidden stockpile trigger. 
They could also have other revolt cards they maybe want to enable, but they can still just sacrifice one of their creatures with the stockpile, so I think we block here. And see what happens. Another stockpile, alright, so they'll get two servo tokens end of turn. But we don't really care too much about those since all our creatures have evasion. Another rogue, interesting. So can't quite play rogue and one of these. But we can definitely play a cheap Gearseeker Serpent. Herald of Anguish would require us to tap down two more artifacts. So that means that we only get to attack with one Smuggler Sculptor this turn. But that's probably still fine. So I think we attack first since that might change our play. Since we might find another cheap artifact with the Copter. And this way if our opponent has maybe a removal spell, they'll use it on the Copter instead of on the Herald. So yeah, let's get in there. And I don't think we want to attack with the Rogue. Alright, so Grasp of Darkness on the Copter. I probably should have responded by maybe crewing the other uh, Copter, but then we could not play the Herald of Anguish. So I think this is still fine. And I'm not planning to attack with the World of Rogue into the two servos. So let's just play out the Herald. And make our opponent discard a card end of turn here. So the opponent with clearly a token or artifact sub theme. And let's see if they have an answer for the Herald. Otherwise, that's gonna quickly run away with the game. And we still have a Rogue and Serpent as backup creatures. So looking pretty good here. Alright, so opponent with Militia Captain. Four creatures in place, so next turn this is gonna transform into the Cult Leader. And all creatures getting in there. So again our opponent has the stockpile, so if we block then uh, they will simply get more tokens end of turn. So if we block we should probably block both, otherwise it doesn't make much sense to block other than preserving our life total. And our opponent could have another Grasp of Darkness here, which means I don't really want to block with my 5-5 since then a Grasp will be able to finish it off. So in that case, I could block with the Rogue. Opponent could also just sacrifice one of their creatures end of turn, I guess, to enable Revolt. So maybe just blocking like this is fine here. And let's see if they just sacrifice it, yep. So we basically just prevented one damage here. And this probably means they don't have a grasp. Alright, so we do kind of want to get the game over with quickly here. Can always use the Herald of Anguish to kill the Militia Captain, so that's probably something we should consider. Uh, don't have a creature in the graveyard for the Scrap Heap Scrounger. But the Scrounger is a pretty appealing target to sacrifice with the Herald. So we could play the Scrap Heap, crew the Smuggler Sculptor, attack for 8, 9, 10 in the air. Uh, let's see, Gear Seeker costs 4, costs 3 if we play the Scrap Heap. But yeah, I kind of want to use the Herald's ability here on the Militia Captain. So that probably means we can't play the Gear Seeker Serpent unless. Yeah, unless we find a very cheap artifact for the Copter. And I guess we might as well crew with the Whirl Rogue here over the Scrap Heap in case we find something that changes our play. It does mean we don't have a blocker back since the Scrap Heap can't block, but I think that's a risk I'm willing to take here. 
So let's try and get in there. And we found a merchant's dock hand. So let's see, if we play that, then gear seeker costs three. So yeah, there's still no great way of doing this. So I guess we just discard the dock hand here. Play scrap heap. And then I think it's probably better to kill the militia captain than it is to play the gear seeker serpent since we already have lethal in play and this just helps us not die. So the opponent now discarding to the Herald of Anguish, down to one card in hand plus one from their draw step. And they discarded a pretty powerful one here in Marionette Master, but they weren't going to be able to cast that with five mana. All right, and it looks like we got there. So an early Herald of Anguish, quite powerful as it turns out. And of course, Smuggler Sculptor also quite a card. Nantuko Husk, another cheap sacrifice outlet. So works well with uh, hidden stockpiles. But uh, we have more than enough evasive power here to close out the game next turn. All right, so yeah, no need to do anything fancy since our opponent has no cards in hand. But uh, could have emptied our hand here. And there's another nice one. Draw three. On to the next one. All right, let's take a look at our opener, which is not particularly great, but it's also not bad. We've got two cranes, which hopefully find an artifact and then the spy network, and we somehow got all of our non-basics, but Sunken Hollow and Catacomb kind of work together. So I guess we can keep this one and hope that the Glen Nest cranes can find something good. We do need an artifact to enable the spy network and preferably a creature so we can connect with it. So Swamp, I think we still lead with a tapped Sunken Hollow here. And then play a Crane turn two. Up against a Wandering Fumarol into Rootbound Crag. So this could be some sort of Planeswalker deck, who knows. All right, Scrap Heap Scrounger is interesting, and I think we actually want to play that here over a crane, just because that puts an artifact in play for the spy network, puts the most pressure on the opponent, and uh, we don't mind if it dies. The question here is, do we play the Catacomb or a Swamp? But I guess we still go with the Catacomb here. So that we have double blue in play. And then next turn we can maybe play a tapped hollow if we don't find anything with a crane. All right, Sphinx's tutelage. All right, so our opponent's on a tutelage deck, which means cards that provide card advantage are not as great since that, uh, of course, makes it easier for the opponent to mill us but having a three-powered creature in play is nice. So we found Servo Schematic. So here the question is, do we want to play a crane or just play the schematic? So we have two creatures in play for the network and the schematic also can't be easily destroyed. So I think we still play the schematic here. So let's hit for three. Play the schematic and a tapped hollow. And then 
even if your opponent has a sweeper effect, the spy network will still get a thopter thanks to the schematic that's in play. All right, two lands gone. And the second tutelage, all right, so Poland had a good opening hand with double tutelage. Now the question is, do they have a lot of draw spells and or sweepers or fog effects? But uh, here we're simply going to play the spy network and hit for four and see if our opponent already wants to maybe use a fog if that's what they're playing since they would not let us draw a card with the spy network but looks like they're going to save them or they simply don't have one S uh, serpent is definitely a nice draw here since that adds five power worth of creature with a pretty cheap cost and doesn't die to red sweeper effects and their opponent did mill us for a bunch, Glimmer of Genius, that's draw two, so we're gonna get milled for at least eight here, which is quite a lot. All right. So we get a Thopter, a Renegade map. So let's see here. We can play a Gear Seeker Serpent that will only cost us three. If we play the Renegade map, the Gear Seeker Serpent will only cost double blue. So we can play map, Serpent and Crane. And I think that's what we want to do, so might as well play the crane first, if that's our plan. Finds us an Asperzoa, which is not the worst, but I think we still want to play the Gear Seeker Serpent here. So let's play the map first, and then the Serpent. And then we can attack for four. And draw another card, which is not optional. So might actually be a drawback here against the tutelage deck. But we are presenting a lethal next turn, so the opponent either needs a fog effect or a sweeper effect. This is a matchup where I kind of wished I had a Metallic Rebuke in my deck, the Improvised Counter spell. But uh, most of the time we're just trying to tap out and play an early Gear Seeker Serpent and there's no real window to keep up the Metallic Rebuke consistently. So that's why it's not in the deck. Can take another look at what's gone. Too bad we can't deal damage to our opponent with the battle at the bridge. Otherwise we could just drain our opponent out. Get another Thopter. So this is where our opponent will start playing fog effects is my guess. So let's attack and find out. Yep. So do we want to play out this Asperzoa and or this Glint Nest Crane? Crane does potentially remove a card out of our deck, which is relevant with Tulage in play. 
Asperzoa. Uh, we can simply return one of these artifacts. So it's not a huge cost. The only downside is if our opponent has a sweeper effect, then playing the Asperzoa doesn't really add much value and just means we're playing another creature that's just going to die. I think I probably want to play the Glynnus Crane and see what we can find. Alright, another Scrap Heap is nice since we can play that and even if your opponent does have a Sweeper we can still return it from the graveyard since we have plenty of creatures in the graveyard. So I'm just gonna keep up two mana here. We have two Scrap Heaps so we can return at least one of them. Down to 13 cards. Would not be surprised if our opponent can mill us out this turn. Glimmer of Genius. So that's at least 8 cards gone. And the odds of them finding another fog effect is quite high. So it's not looking great here. Of course, blue and black don't have access to any actual enchantment removal. Blue does have some ways to bounce enchantments, but uh, no room for those cards in this deck. Down to five cards. Cathartic Reunion is gonna mill us for the remaining couple of cards here. There's no way that we can uh, put cards back into our library. So as soon as we go to our draw step, we will be dead. All right. So double tutelage start from the opponent, followed by a timely fog was good enough. All right, on to the next one. All right, let's take a look at our opener, which actually is better than it looks since we have the map to find another land. Bone saw for the Asperzoa. Yeah, this hand still needs to draw one land, but I think I wanna try it out here and explore how far we can push these synergies. No need to play the bone saw yet, kind of can keep that as a surprise. And we also have cards that let us loot, so we might want to discard this at some point. So, can keep it in hand for now. Green white. And we did find another land, which is nice. So no need to sacrifice the map yet, since we don't need the black mana right away. So we can just simply play out a scrap heap scrounger. Next turn we can sacrifice a map for a swamp, play Asperzoa and Bonesaw. And then we can return the Bonesaw on our next turn. Alright. Duskwatch Recruiter from the opponent. So if we wanted to, we could take a turn off and kill it with our Battle at the Bridge. But I don't think we want that. I would rather attack with the scrap heap, see if our opponent blocks, they probably don't. And then play Asperzoa to keep applying the pressure, and then maybe next turn we can take it out. Since it's not gonna transform on the opponent's turn, since we're gonna play the Asperzoa. So yeah, let's attack first. Give our opponent less information to work with, so no reason to play out the Asperzoa yet. And as expected, they just take 3 damage. But maybe after playing Asperzoa, they might regret that. All 
All right, play out a swarm, play out Aspersor, and now it's important that we play the Bone Saw, so we don't have to return the Scrap Heap Scrounger. And the next turn we'll be hitting for seven if all goes well. Well, Reclamation Sage is obviously pretty good against our deck. Also a blocker for Scrap Heap Scrounger. So I guess we'll have to hit the brakes a little bit and try and play a, a longer game. Glint Nest Crane is not terrible. So let's play the Crane and keep a black mana in case we want to use Battle at the Bridge here. I don't think we need to play out a Weaponcraft Enthusiast here. Servo Schematic is not the worst. So now the question is do we want to use this opportunity to play Battle at the Bridge, maybe take out the Duskwatch Recruiter? Since attacking will probably result in our opponent blocking with Reclamation Sage, which is not great for us. Could also just equip the Glenness Crane with the Bone Saw this turn. It's not like Duskwatch Recruiter is a high priority target at the moment, so I think I'll just equip the Bone Saw onto the Glenness Crane for now. And I don't think we want to attack yet with the Scrap Heap, although we do have a creature in the graveyard, so I guess this opens up an option for next turn to maybe return the Scrap Heap Scrounger. Alright, our opponent does block. Duskwatch is going to get activated here, interesting. And they find a Woodland Wanderer. Do they have land number 4 here is the question? They do, but it's still just a plane, so that Woodland Wanderer is not going to be all that giant. And our opponent has a 3-3 in play. So Servo Schematic plus Battle at the Bridge means Servo Schematic is kind of a free play since that adds two artifacts, plus we can also tap Bonesaw. Uh, we only have single black so we can only play Battle at the Bridge if we don't return the Scrap Heap. So what we could do is play the Schematic and then play Battle at the Bridge for X equals 4, just to get the extra life gain, and then hit for 2 with a Crane. Since now the Howler is kind of a problem, since your opponent might be able to play out an expensive creature. So yeah, this probably seems like a fine play. Could keep the Battle at the Bridge for maybe the Woodland Wanderer, which is gonna be a 4-4. Four -four. So we could still be able to kill it. But the Howler can also still attack into our creature, so I think we just want to take that out. And tap all these. And then hit for two. And I guess we're trying to race in the air hoping to find one of our payoff cards. Gear Seeker Serpent would be great. Whirler Rogue would also be a nice one, as would Thopter Spy Network. Even our Reverse Engineers would be decent here, allowing us to find more cards. But I'm just gonna play and activate the Recruiter, and they miss, so that's good for us. Let's see if we can find a good card. Servo Schematic is again not the worst, but we still haven't really found a good payoff card. Uh, Glynn Crane also doesn't really help with finding our payoff cards since most of them are not artifacts. 
So the question here is, do we want to get back the scrap heap end of turn? We probably do. And then we could just play another Glynnus Crane here over the schematic. So I guess we can attack first for two. Don't want to move the equipment here since that'll cost us one mana. Add another flyer to the board. And try to find something good here. All right. So I guess we just play the copter since that will be able to get in there next turn. All right. It looks like our opponent is maybe stuck on two colors and they haven't found their third color. Duskwatch doesn't have any great attacks here, but it's gonna attack anyways. Uh, well, I probably should have crewed the Smuggler's Copter in response here and then block with it, although that does run into the risk of certain combat tricks or removal spells. Um, could double block with the Servo as well. I guess I don't really care if our opponent has some sort of trick here, since these creatures aren't that valuable. So we did lose a Servo token. And maybe I guess screwing the copter is not great since that loses pretty badly to a planar outburst. So I guess this outcome was still acceptable. Opponent with Sylvan Advocates, which might become larger next turn, as well as Deathcap Cultivator, so maybe that's where they found a black mana. Who knows? So Gear Seeker is a decent draw here. Does cost us four mana does also mean that we can play a servo schematic for free if we want to. Um, I guess we can attack first, although if we play the servo schematic and the serpent first, we can crew with the servo token we got so we can get in for an extra point of damage, which seems relevant here, so I guess I'll play the schematic first. And for single white or green, there's no removal spell I'm too worried about. So I guess I can attack first, in case that changes my play. And, uh, yeah. Get in for six. And, yeah, we can ditch an Enthusiast. Play a Serpent, which does a good job of blocking even a 4-5 Sylvan Advocate. And uh, we're very close to killing our opponent, but all right, Giselle is actually a pretty good play from the opponent since that stops our Smuggler's Copter from attacking, as well as all our other flyers. So we can still attack with the Gear Seeker Serpent if our opponent let's say double blocks, we still get to kill Gisela, and we have a follow-up Gear Seeker. Yeah, I don't think we can attack with everyone because then our opponent just jumps with one of their two drops on the Serpent, and then gets to eat the Smuggler's Copter for free, or they just eat the Copter for free and take the rest of the damage. Uh, I guess we can afford to equip the Serpent with the Bone Saw here, and then could also play the other bone saw and equip, which is relevant if our opponent would triple block and also puts a lethal attack on the board, which our opponent has to respect and maybe block. So I guess we might as well play out the other bone saw and equip it. Since we can still play out our gear seeker if we tap our black mana here. Alright, let's hit for seven, and our opponent's probably gonna Chum block with the cultivator is my guess. Nope, they're going for the double block, so we get to kill Gisela. And Advocate as well. Which opens the door for the Copter. Do we want to play the Gear Seeker into a potential planar outburst is a question here. 
I think we still do. Since our opponent is now back at 11, so it's not like they're dead in two turns. No attacks from the opponent, and the Gitrock monster, 6-6, six, six, that's gonna draw our opponent a bunch of cards. So not a bad play, but we do have the Copter that can attack now. And I think we'll put the equipment on the Glindnest cranes here to spread out our power a little bit. And I guess I will keep double blue untapped here in case we find a reverse engineer or another gear seeker serpent and then we can crew with a servo token could also equip onto the serpents and force a trade with the gidrock monster that might also be an option here But it's not like the Gidrock monster is doing all that much for the opponent. I mean, it draws a bunch of extra cards, but this way we would get in for seven, and then next turn probably a lethal. Yeah, maybe I do equip onto the Serpent, so I kind of wasted a mana there. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us. But uh, yeah, let's get in like this and force the trade. Guess I'll keep the swamp so we can get back the scrap heap scrounger. So our opponent does block, takes six, and we could move the equipment or we can get back scrap heap. I think I prefer getting back scrap heap scrounger. Also means even a planar outburst here doesn't do it for the opponent since we can get back scrap heap end of turn, crew the copter, and put the two bone cells onto it. Nissa can make a land into a 5-5, or can return one of their creatures to their hand. Giselle would not be bad, but they're gonna die before they can play it, so land becomes a 5-5, but they're just dead to our flyers. And end of turn we can still return the scrap heap if we want to. I guess our opponent's... Alright, it's just gonna attack here. They could have still represented maybe a removal spell since they did have the cultivator and the planes up. But I guess we're playing the AI at this point, so they're not too subtle about it. So yeah, time to crew. Equip for good measure. And get in there. Just to see what we would have drawn. Renegade map. Alright, so Smuggler Sculptor saves the day. And I guess Gear Seeker was pretty good there as well. So I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. All right, let's take a look at our opener, which is five lands, basically, so I don't think we can keep. And this one looks actually pretty good. Do need maybe a couple more lands, but we do have lots of artifacts, plus reverse engineer. If we draw another bone saw, we could reverse engineer on turn two. But uh, I guess if we draw a land, we can still do it on turn three, which is not the worst. All right, we get to live the dream. Turn two, reverse engineer. And we're actually pretty close to casting this Gear Seeker Serpent. Well, there we go.